Hello and welcome to this Q4 update, the last update of the year for 2023. We're obviously here on site today at Darwin Street and the weather's against us. It's a wet and windy day in Birmingham. As you can see behind us, we've got uh, the facades all finished in the rear courtyard and uh, the scaffolding is due to start coming down today and then we'll continue over the next couple of weeks. We are, however, still uh, working through a critical path at the front facade, so uh, time's been against us there and again we're hoping for a bit of clear weather to be able to press on with that. We're doing well internally though, as a lot of the units now uh, move toward completion uh, and the units are now build complete, which will head inside shortly so you can see what they look like. Inside a typical two bedroom now, uh, as you can see, pretty well build complete. And this is the story pretty much across the development to different stages. Uh, in here, we've got uh, obviously power on, lights are on, the uh, kitchen's fully functional, the bathrooms are in and uh, pretty much complete. We've got a couple of panels that are outstanding due to be fitted over the next few weeks leading up to Christmas. Uh, in this particular unit, we've got flooring and carpets down. So uh, looking good internally, bit of work to do externally before we start doing handovers at the early part of next year. I'm here with Aaron Granger of EG Electrical. Uh, these are one of our construction partners that we've worked with for many, many years. So uh, we thought we'd catch up today and I'll just give you a bit of an insight into uh, what they do and then the different processes that they work through within our developments. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Joe. Good to see you. And yourself. So uh, tell us a bit about EG kind of when you started, what you're up to now, and um, and then we'll just talk a bit about kind of first fix, second fix, and then generally kind of how you, how you work through our developments from it. Yep. So we're EG Electrical. We started in 2006, and we've been working with yourself, as you're aware, for around five years now. Uh, we've handed over a, a few developments, and we look forward to the developments that we're moving forward and in looking into in the future. Good. Cool. Uh, current developments we're doing, we offer full design, electrical and mechanical packages um, and we're progressing through our first fixed stage with, in, within the apartments and also in the landlord areas as well. Okay. Uh, and we've also completed a, our first core as well within all second fix as well. So we've got the bathrooms fully installed, all the electrics installed, we've got the CCTV underway the fire alarm and the sprinkler systems as well. We've done the pressure testing on the sprinkler systems now. Yeah. So they're all good to go. So also within the apartments, we've got the ventilation. So we've completed all of the ventilation and all the lagging on the first fixed phase. Uh, we're now due to get power into the building. So we'll start with the testing. Sure. Uh, so we can energize all of those units as well. So we can do all the airflow rates. Um, once we've got the power on within the units, that's when we can start to do the certification phase, which we're ready for. Uh, seven Trent are due on site uh, within the next week, which means that we can start the construction phase of the main tank and the head of sets. All the first fix of the boosted cold water is all in, so we will have water within the units shortly. Okay. Uh, Fire-wise, uh, the fire alarm is 100% first fixed, and we'll be looking at uh, different phases of that to get that building up and running okay. um, as we move as we move forward. So you mentioned fire. Fire is obviously a, a big element now, and there's been a lot of changes within your industry, certainly for yes. fire regs and then us as developers. Can you talk us through a bit about those and sort of how that's changed and what apartments have got facilitations now that they didn't have before? Yes, yeah, so the, the key changes there are that you've got the introduction of sprinklers within the apartments. Okay. So you will see that the, that the apartments will have sprinklers. They will always have to comply, comply to part six of the of BS5839 within the fire regulation. So every room will have its own detector within there. So that will be localised within the unit. And then depending on the height of the unit, initially it was only in Scotland where we had to introduce the evacuation systems, but now that's being rolled out throughout the UK as well. So we'll see a key element of that within the design process where you'll see that the full evacuation systems will be now incorporated within the rooms. So the rooms will have a sounder, whereas if there was a fire within that sector of the building, a fire officer would be able to evacuate certain people during certain times to ensure a, a safe evacuation of the building. Okay, great. And then when it comes to certification, has that changed as well from a fire reg perspective? 
Stification is not is not changed so much. I mean, all the elements of the fire all tied in will all have their own part of the certification of which we have to be compliant to. Sure. Um, but no, the building control are you know extremely stringent and aware of what we need to be issuing as a company. So again, our insurances all have to be in line with that particular sector, right. and we have to ensure that that is packaged up and delivered pre O and M, so the building can be signed off. Okay, right. Hope you found that informative. We'll be back in Q1 as we near completion of some areas and doing handover in others. So uh, these will be one of our last updates as we uh, draw to a close on site. Your mortgage process should be either well underway or due to start, subject to where you are in the building. And obviously, I hope you're talking to Lamont about the next stage of your journey with lettings and management. We'll see you next year. Meantime, wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Last quarter was all about mortgages. This quarter, I thought we'd cover lettings and management. The final piece of the jigsaw for the buy to let owner. So we're going to sit down with Claire, who heads up our Lamont & Co business. Hi, Claire. Hello, Joe. How are you? Very well, thank you. Are you? Good, good. Yes, good, thank you. Excellent. So uh, tell us a bit about your role in Lamont and a bit more about what Lamont does as a business? Yeah, absolutely. So I run and manage the Lamont team. We're a team of now six, um, 70 years experience between us. Uh, we come well equipped uh, to deal with all manner of, of um, property management needs and requirements. So our main role is to transition landlords from prosperity upon completion of their purchase into our bespoke lettings and management service. Okay. Um, we're quite fortunate really working so closely with Prosperity because um, the transition is very, very smooth and we build long and lasting relationships with our clients from a very early stage. Right. Um, having the team here, um, we've got from junior property managers all the way up to senior property management staff. So whatever the requirement, there's someone there equipped to deal with all manner of needs. So one of the key elements with Lamont that's I think different to like the classic high street model is um, the fact that we have a single property manager per development. That property manager obviously sees the client all the way through the process. Yeah. So could you just elaborate on that a bit? Yes, absolutely. So very early on, um, a property manager is assigned to a specific site or development. Sure. And that individual will stay side by side with that client from pre-completion almost, all the way through to let and management and inevitably ongoing management. And we find that that really is quite unique and different to what the high streets offer. Um, and we all know, having worked with large banks and corporate corporations in the past, when you call and want to speak to somebody, often you patch through to different people and sure. it can cause a lot of unease with the clients not having um, that specific point of contact. So for us, we, we cash in on that really because our clients know they've got one point of contact all the way through and they're never having to re-explain things yeah. and, and go over past sure. and, and previous experiences. Sure. And obviously the client, the manager ultimately understands that development a lot better. Absolutely. They know every single client, so it's very much bespoke relationship. Absolutely. Individual client, they know the, the development inside out. So they're always aware of obviously what's happening on site and being able Absolutely. to communicate that back. And they have a lot of a pull as well because they know the site so um, intimately and the client's needs. We're able to ensure that the management is at the highest level. Now moving on to the market in general. Okay. So what have you seen this year? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of publicity about rents obviously increasing. Um, you know, so generally, what has the market at the moment, activity, rent levels, and, and where do you see it going next year? Well, it's growing. It's always growing at the moment. I mean, we've just had the rental price index release for October, and the statistics are just astounding at the moment. So this year, we've seen an annual increase of 9.6% okay. nationally. That's excluding London yeah. um, in terms of rental demand. So talk to me about demand in the market currently, um, nationally, and then also let's let's look at Birmingham particularly. <coughs> okay. um, obviously, the, the government overtaxed buy to let. Uh, you know, we lost a lot of buy to let property from the market. Um, construction has over many many years has never fulfilled supply. 
Um, obviously, it's been a very buoyant owner occupier market. So overall, properties that have gone into the market to rent has got lower and lower over many years. Yes. I think that there's a bit slight uptick this year, but you can tell us more about that. So where are we now then as far as from a supply demand perspective? So the demand is as ever growing, as we know. Um, we just simply can't keep up with what what's out there at the moment. Although we have seen a small increase in properties coming into the rental market, 7% in fact, compared okay. to last year. Um, it's does that just, include BTR? It does indeed. Okay. It does indeed. But that still is nowhere near enough for, for what the demand is on rental at the moment. Um, we can draw comparison just from the inquiries that we receive per property. So uh, previously, back in 2019, we'd received maybe eight inquiries per rental listed. Okay. Um, and now we're looking at 36. So it just shows the demand is, is ever growing. So what's the current kind of letdown rate in, say, Birmingham, for example? So you're taking on a property on the first of the month. You know, can the, can the landlord expect it to be rented within that month? Or? Yes, absolutely. Well, because of the Tenant Fee Act, we are obliged to rent it and let it and move somebody in within 15 days. Okay. Um, I have to say, though, more recently, and probably in the last three months, we can attribute to the um, the quicker turnaround that we're actually doing it in about 10 days now from, from, let okay. to, from viewing to moving. Okay. Okay. which is phenomenal. I've never known it to be um, so fast-paced. Mm. So where have we seen rents this year? So Birmingham particularly, we've seen an enormous increase, mm -hmm. um, some 3.7% compared to the market this time last year. Um, we always find that central locations are, of course, very, very popular, and with that we can command a higher rent. Um, a lot of agents can be a little bit overzealous with the rents and kind of take advantage of the situation at the moment, but with all the data that we can use to draw on um, to price our properties, we price them not only appropriately, but in line with the market value and the rental price index. And we're seeing that compared to, say, two years ago, the average two bedroom rental property in Birmingham, for example, is £200 more um, than you would find back in 2020. So that sounds great. Rents are going up. Um, obviously, there's concerns about at what point does it run out of steam? Um, but give me a value of a one bed and a two bed and just give us a little insight into the profile of those those tenants. Okay, so I'd say on average, the one beds in Birmingham at the moment are around the £1,100 mark. Okay. This isn't taking into account any furnishing views, aspects or parking facilities. This is just a uh, postcode. Okay. And for the two beds, I'd say around the £1,300 to £1,400. Okay. Now, um, the profile of tenants that we tend to have come through our door are between the ages of 20 and 30. Okay. And these tenants are professional working people within the city and okay. they are willing to spend 37% of their income on rent, which tells us the type of profile we're looking at. Yeah. Um, so we deal with working professionals as an agency wherever okay. possible. Um, and we're finding that the city living is certainly very popular amongst that age group. Okay. Um, obviously the standard and style of the property plays an enormous part and that's where we come in our prosperity come in yeah. in providing those stylish contemporary homes um, but I'd say the rental market on a whole has seen a, a big shift in the trends with the types of tenants where 10 years ago you know you'd probably get um, a, a couple that maybe couldn't purchase a property due to mortgage restrictions or credit restrictions yeah. We're seeing people now walk through the door who could purchase properties quite willingly but are choosing to rent okay. because they like the lifestyle and the flexibility that comes with renting. Great, okay. And are we finding any premium on furnishings or not? Absolutely. So certainly city centre living, so any of our main cities which we develop in, we are finding an enormous pull towards furnished properties. Okay. And the reason being is we're, we're dealing with working professionals. You know, sometimes they're maybe on secondments in the city. They've taken a, a job with a company for three years or, or so, um, and they don't want the hassle of having to buy specific furniture sure. for an apartment that they may only be in for three or four years. And so some of them actually have homes outside of the city, so we bear that in mind a lot with the, the traction and attraction with the types of tenants because 
we're aiming at that working professional type sure. um, who is taking the job outside of their hometown. So mm. furnishing is absolutely paramount, in my opinion, for, mm. for city flats. As we progress with our next development, Smithfield Lofts and Works, um, that's going to be a kind of a different play again. So Good it's thing. the same standard um, from a construction perspective. Internal specifications have, have been lifted again. Uh, but over and above that, we've got a lot of amenity. So Absolutely. running track, uh, cinema, dining spaces, office spaces. Um, you know, th there's, there's everything in there you, you could want for as a tenant, I believe. Um, and what sort of premium do you think are we going to see on that? Oh, well, I mean, based on today's numbers, I could give a, an idea, but I can tell you that it won't be the same when it completes because of the growth that we're seeing in the market. Mm. Um, I mean, if we were to say specifically a two-bedroom apartment in a, in a site like Smithfield, I think we'll be looking upwards of £2,000. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And that will change again, I'm yeah. absolutely sure. Okay. And again, that's a sort of professional mix. And we're also seeing sort of um, Chinese students, which again, you know, want to rent premium property absolutely well just on our seven house and mosley garden sites which are perfectly located in in birmingham city center um we do attract a lot of overseas students there already okay. um so something like smithfield you know it's just going to go through the roof i'm absolutely mm. sure i think there's a balance there isn't there because it's it's about letting down the units um to the right profile um, at the right price, but also getting a good balance between the profile, not only from a kind of income perspective, but you know, sort of, you know, you want working professionals, you want a mix of students. Um, is that something you control as well? Absolutely, but internally for Le Mans, we we have a profile of tenant that we um, are looking for specifically. So that often comes down to affordability criteria. Um, obviously, we do the once over and make sure they, they suit the requirements for the property as well. Sure. Um, so we will always aim and endeavour to have a mixture of people, providing they do meet our stringent referencing criteria. Well, thanks for that, Claire. Very no informative. Problem. Thank you. Hope you found that uh, interesting. And if you have any questions or queries about your property, either the current property or current property that's due to complete, feel free to contact Claire or her team at Le Monde. Thank you.